Hey, welcome to Bardscraft. Today I'll make this big boss room with moving parts and loot. For the paint job, I'll also try these oil colors, so let's see what happens. Now let's delve into the dungeon. Alright, this will be part of the dungeon for my dungeon entrance I built in the last episode. If the players manage to enter, they'll face the next challenge, the Tomb of the Ancients. I began by roughly planning out the battle room. It will be a large room with two corridors or doorways on the side, and this will be the main entrance. In the middle I plan to place a higher area with a large mysterious coffin on top. Along with that, there will be smaller coffins in the corners of the room. Also, some kind of a shrine or loot table could be cool here. Anyway, we'll come up with more as we build. By the way, the material is hardboard. I'll use a saw to cut this out. As I pointed out the last time, this is not the right saw. I found a finer saw that did the job much better. Knowing this, I recommend getting hardboard and a small, relatively fine saw for your basing, and you'll be fine. There we go, I then quickly sanded the edges flat and nice. Yeah, that looks very good. Next I made my floor tiles from XPS foam. I'll just show you how to make these real quick, because I already made similar ones in the last episode. First you cut your bits, cut more bits, then you shape them and glue them on. As you can see, these bits are irregular in shape. This is partly because I don't care, and also because it will kind of look good. Since everything we encounter in D&D is crooked and old, we don't really have to care about measurements. At least, that's what I tell myself. We tell ourselves many things, but here there is no excuse. I should have planned this better. With some adjustments though, everything is fine. Here I glued in these partial tiles to fix my problem. And to fit the coffin bearing thingy here, I activated my hindsight and removed 9 tiles to make some room. The tiles also didn't fit perfectly here on the back side of the room. Not good. To fill the empty base space, I'll make some kind of a wall here later. Next, I continued by making the elevated platform in the middle. I cut out three squares from foam, each of different size. Here I noticed that my knife was too dull, so I quickly sharpened it. Okay, they stack like this. Then I cut the top bit smaller so that minis can stand on the stairs. Medium bases fit barely now, but these spaces will become a bit larger soon. I don't like carving in bricks and stones, so I decided to make these diagonal cuts in order to create nicely shaped, interesting stone slabs. So I'm kind of going with the same theme as I did in the last build. There, the stonework of the walls was made in a similar way, and I really liked the look. Next I wondered, if I attempt to build a coffin on top of this, it will look very strange. Instead, I'll make the top layer into an interactive piece that works as the top of the coffin. The entire structure is the coffin. When the tomb is disturbed, the top opens, unleashing a dark force upon the poor adventurers. The top will be removable, attached with magnets or toothpicks. We'll see, but for now I'll glue on the other bits. I have noticed that I tend to get stuck if I start thinking too much. Instead, I just do. 
I believe many men of this age share the same. We think very much, but end up doing nothing. Okay, anyway, next I cut some pieces for the partial wall that goes here. Putting walls around the entire dungeon would be tiresome and would block vision. So instead, this one wall works well to imply walls for the rest of the room. Here I textured everything before I glued in anything more. Again, I use my trusty ball of aluminum foil that has served me well, starting from my first video. After texturing everything, I took a sharp blade and made various cuts and dents on all of the stonework. These exaggerated cuts make for a good fantasy look that I like to have on my table. Then, after a while, I continued by gluing the wall bits in place using way too much PVA glue. Here I also realized this can be used as outdoor terrain as well. Now with the wall on the backside, this can be used as some place of power, especially if I add some pillars. Anyway, I stayed true to the theme of the tomb entrance and sharpened some barbecue stick bits. These are used to attach the stone slabs on the wall. Good, that's one additional detail your players can admire while they are being mauled to death. I got a good idea, I also went ahead and connected the bits across the entire wall. It looks interesting and increases the rigidity of the slightly fragile wall. And in front of the wall I built a simple table. Here we can place in some extra miniature bits in the end. With the minis for scale in place, I started thinking about the coffins I pictured in my grand plan. I realized I already have coffins. I made these in this video. Very simple, go check it out. The good thing here is that the coffins won't take too much room in the corner, so now we have space for pillars instead. Yeah! Okay, pillars. I cut out four simple pillars from XPS foam. I removed some material off the edges, and then textured and roughed them up as usual. One pillar is collapsed, and on another one I carved in giant claw marks. These are no ordinary ruined pillars. I cut a small hole into each pillar to make some room for one of these plastic skulls. Besides facing undead and the still to be determined big boss, these skull pillars will shoot poisonous darts at our adventurers. Since the party is still low level, these will function more of an annoyance. The pillars must use one action to turn, then they can attack on the next round if the target hasn't moved. On hit, the target takes a tiny amount of piercing and poison damage and becomes poisoned for one round. Okay, to finish this off I carved in some details. This is best done with a really sharp exacto knife, I just haven't found mine since I moved. Then to facilitate the turning of the pillars, I simply drilled in holes in each corner, roughly barbecue stick sized. Then I glued in pointy barbecue sticks and also drilled into the foam so that the pillars don't sit too tightly on the sticks. Ha! I shall have all the treasure! Ow. Now back to the top of the giant tomb or coffin. Again, my solution involves a barbecue stick. I got two sticks that have one pointy end. Then I drilled a hole into the pieces, one hole per piece. Carefully I glued the stick into the opposing ends of the holes, like this. And now it works as shown, very nice. 
Grave open, grave close. The next morning I sprayed the terrain with the black. This time I'm using a cheap spray I got for a couple of euros, so I'm interested to see how it compares to army painters sprays. Alright, the spray has poor coverage and the foam melts very easily. I tried to spray gently for a while, but ended up with a few heavily melted spots. That's okay, we'll see how these look when painted up. Okay, I decided it is best to cover the rest by brush. Problem was that the spray did nothing to cover in between cracks and at the base of the tiles. Once I had a complete coverage, I went ahead and overbrushed everything with a grey. As you can see, I mix the paint as I apply more on the terrain. In this way we get some natural variance in the brightness of different areas. Here I tried a new quick painting method for me. Keep an eye on how the paint is mixed, gradually becoming lighter and lighter. When blending the layers in this way and applying the lighter paints mainly on the edges, I was able to get fairly good pillars in no time. All they need next is a final dry brush. Pretty good, right? I continued painting the rest using my newfound technique that probably half of you have already tried. I was happy that this worked well and saved me some time because I was already falling behind in schedule. Considering I don't have a schedule, that's pretty bad. Okay, next I get a little white paint on the tip and start dry brushing. Hits the edges very nicely. The surfaces that were accidentally and slightly intentionally molten by the spray look very good now. Of course, when you look at them close up, it's not good, but from a tabletop distance, I do prefer the molten texture over the intended. Here you can see that the non-molten top part looks a bit different from the rest. No problem, this I fix by dry brushing both as much. Painting the skull pillars must have been the most fun part of this build. Something about dry brushing these edges and cracks while seeing some results is very satisfying. After that I still painted the rest of the tiles. Now this would be an okay start for gaming, but we're gonna paint more. First I painted the sticks with gold, also the ones inside of the walls. I kind of heavily dry brushed on the paint. Just to be fancy, I also painted the sticks that hold the pillars up. That gave me an idea, I can remove the skeleton pillars and use the golden sticks as something else for an entirely different adventure. To add weathering and general dungeon stains, I experimented with oil colors. Who knows, perhaps it will work, I thought. First I mixed a bit of black into this brown to make it slightly darker. I intended to use this as a smudgy wash, so I tried how it behaves on a piece of hardboard first. Mm, yeah, that should be good. Okay, go for it. I applied the mixture on a small surface first. Then I smudged around with a piece of paper. Good enough, I thought. I'll use this for the rest. Basically, you can do the same with any wash or just a diluted paint, so why try to be fancy and use oil paints? Yes, I have a reason to. The oil paint is strongly pigmented, so it should look better than the washes I have used before. You can basically put one little drop of oil paint into a dilution and it will immediately become very opaque. Alright, I then mixed a slightly brownish green and kept working. I applied this mainly around the pillars, but also on some spots already stained by the previous brown. Finally, I apply just the green. This goes around and under the skulls. Perhaps it's the leaking poison from the dart shooting mechanism. This seemed to work really well, and the thinner I've used hasn't caused any damage. 
Next I put the oil paints aside and acquired loot. Here I have lots of bits from Oathmark, Elves and Frostgrave Cultist. I won't use all of them for minis, so getting value out of them for terrain building is great. First I cut out a few of these plain shields, then figured out how to disarm these spears. This would have been much easier with the X-Acto blade, but I still hadn't found it. Then using one of these longswords and a spear shaft, I made an epic great spear. There will definitely be loot in this dungeon. Then from the cultists I cut out a satchel with a bone and dagger, some undead hands and a skull. Okay, the bits were painted very simply. Drake to it for all bone, brown for the spear shafts, gunmetal on the blades and the helmet of the skull. I added some details with gold before painting one of the shields entirely gold. The other one is painted copper. Before further painting I glued on the pieces wherever I thought they fit the best. The golden shield and the great spear go on the table. The other bits go, well, just somewhere. Once the glue had dried I made some sloppy highlights with silver and gold. Good, next I took my previously used oil paints and applied them on the bits. This is a black green. After getting it everywhere I wanted, I gently removed some of it from surfaces I wanted to keep light. And why not apply this on the skulls as well? Finally, I applied the green on the copper shield. Very nice. The band of cultists have solved the puzzle and entered the tomb of the ancients. I was already fortunate enough to use this terrain in a few games of Frostgrave. We put an extra treasure in the middle and had the skull pillars shoot at anything that comes within a medium range. The pillars also were a way to gain experience for your wizard. If destroyed, they grant 50 experience points. All in all, this terrain worked great and I also look forward to using this in D&D. Alright, if you already haven't watched the dungeon entrance build, here it is. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this episode and consider joining me on Patreon if you get much out of these videos. Now brothers, go ahead and craft and join the path of tabletop crafting.